Uh, thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. On Sunday, I joined the MUA, MUA Family Day in Pickett at Port Botany in support of sacked wharfies. Uh, 97 out of 224 um, workers at Hutchinson's um, operations in both Brisbane and Sydney lost their jobs last week. That's 40 per cent of their workforce. At a time of um, growing unemployment, the enormous stress this, this puts on the workers and their families is really unacceptable. Um, the strategy has been dubbed Phoenix Rising. I understand that even the company is using that term because what's been widely reported, and it's certainly what many of the workers were talking about on Sunday, is that this is a strategy to bring in greater automation, to bring in automation without negotiation with the workforce. Now, this is something the Greens find abhorrent, and I certainly do personally. When I gave my first speech in this place, one of the people who came to see me give my speech was my uncle. My uncle was a wharfie, as was my other uncle, Uncle Ray and Uncle Leon. So it's an issue that I feel doubly, many, many more times, very strongly about. When you see workers treated in such a shocking way, when I was young, I remember my wharfie, my wharfie uncles going to work and seeing them taking their hook and then hearing the stories about the ball system. And the ball system, when I remember how they described it and when I hear about how um, the body hire system works now, and this appears to be part of the equation of where Hutchinson's want to take um, their operations in Australia, it really does sound like attempting to turn back the clock to the appalling um, work conditions that prior to the Second World War, coming out of the Second World War, wharfies um, were forced to operate under if they had any hope of getting a job. Uh, Paul McAleer, the MUA Sydney branch secretary, has said that there has been no genuine consultation with the MUA on this move by Hutchinson. Um, and that's something that I understand is how it's certainly seen in Brisbane as well. Um, there's been no question um, about the competitive competitiveness of Hutchinson. Um, their profits come in billions of dollars with their operations across so many different industry sectors. This theme about pushing to greater automation is coming up so often when you speak to people involved and when you read what's happening on our wars. Mr McClear has also said that the union is seeking a fair and objective process where all labour data and modelling are put on the table to determine the true nature and scope of what is going on. Now, surely that is the reasonable way to go, something that if this government, this Abbott government, had any decency, any commitment to um, sort of uh, any decency to um, working people in terms of their right to have a job, dignity at work, safety at work, would at least be encouraging the company to be upfront about the situation for their workforce. But we're hearing nothing about that. What we're in fact seeing from Hutchinson is um, a, a set of um, tactics that you can call nothing but confrontation. Another comment that came up um, the few hours I, um, when I had the opportunity on Sunday to spend at Port Botany was, it's Patrick's all over again. And many of you would remember 1998 with the balaclavas, the dogs, the um, shocking attacks then on um, working people, wharfies, at our um, ports around the country. Now, again, this isn't something new. When you look at the history of working Australia, working class people in this country, these sort of attacks are frequent. And they really are attacks by companies hell-bent on watering down, running down working conditions so they can increase their profits. Now, it is worth remembering when um, we talk about the comparison with Patrick's that um, that ended with the High Court finding in favour of the union's case that the company had attempted a work workplace restructure 
to dismiss its unionised employees. Why do they want to weaken the union? Why do they want to run down working conditions? Again, it's about increasing the profits. And that, that is the key intent of the Abbott government with, with their continuing attacks on the union movement and why they have been so um, effectively silent in the appalling conditions that we've seen play out um, to workers on our waterfront in Melbourne, in Sydney and Brisbane over the past week. Uh, when I was in, um, at Port Botany, a number of us spoke um, in support of the striking workers, Senator Doug Cameron, myself, representatives of a number of the unions, um, the workers themselves, Angelo Gavriel Artis, former AU president, now working um, with the International Education Union. And um, in Brisbane, uh, there's been similar actions. Bob Carnegie, the Maritime Union of Australia, Queensland State Secretary, uh, has spoken along similar lines. They've had a similar experience with um, the management of Hutchinson Zia. Um, they've um, Bob has said that, um, that they involved themselves in meaningful talks about the mitigation of this problem until they, uh, until they show us proper labour modelling data and behave like pro proper, responsible corporate citizens. So the union has been very clear. They're just saying we're ready to talk, we're ready to ensure that um, the, um, the um, work can continue, um, but let's understand what the um, data is with regard to the workplace and the, what that modelling um, does show. Um, Time and time again, the comments that were said is what they were fighting for was justice and fairness. Surely that is something that any decent government would get behind, but again, silence on that front. This is potentially a huge issue. Automation of our, of our wars um, would mean so much unemployment, so much dislocation. Um, many of the um, many Sydney um, unionists turned up on Sunday from the Electrical Trades Union, the Australian Services Union, the Plumbers Union, um, and it was it was certainly an enjoyable day. But there was also a lot of um, uncertainty, uncertainty um, as people s spoke about um, their feelings about job insecurity, and uh, that that was um, obviously clearly understandable. People so uncertain about what, what their future what their future holds. Um, Adam Bant, the uh, Greens member for Melbourne, um, has also taken up this issue and he has called on the government to amend the Fair Work Act so that unfair actions from employers in the future do not require the Fair Work Commission to issue orders against employees. Um, and um, that that motion is now before the parliament. It's been seconded by Cathy McGowan, um, and it calls on the government, as I said, to amend the Fair Work Act so that the internationally recognised right to strike is protected, and the, that other point that I just made, and the Fair Work Commission is not required to issue orders against employees if their employer has acted unfairly and instigated a dispute. Something that, when you consider what's happened at Hutchinson, is obviously needed. And again, from a government that is always talking about reforming um, the fair work laws um, and how our um, in, um, workplaces operate, that's something that, that, if they were a decent government, and they were true, that they are, are concerned about jobs, they are concerned about working people, would pass. But we know that won't happen. We know that they're just words from this government that are hell bent on running down our workplaces, making them more unsafe, um, increasing job security, so they can deliver for their constituents. And what their constituents want is an easier run to make profits. So um, it was a very good um, day on Sunday, but I left there to come to Canberra with great concern. Um, um, I did also want to share that um, the Greens New South Wales have also passed a motion on the weekend indicating their support for the sac sacked wharfies. Um, raising concerns about how that um, the sacking was conveyed to them by email and text, um, so indicating support for the um, MUA picket and um, Greens, um, large numbers of Greens members are out there on the picket on a regular basis. And, and finally, in that motion, um, it said the Greens New South Wales calls on Hutchinson's ports to engage in discussions with the Maritime Union of Australia to discuss proposed workplace changes at Hutchinson and the reinstatement of the 100 sack workers. 
Now, again, to emphasise, how reasonable is that? All they're asking for is to talk. Surely that is what should have happened before they were sacked, but no criticism from the government about those tactics. Um, Again, um, just to share with you some of the um, comments that were made as I met a number of the um, operators, some of them crane drivers. One had come from Adelaide after he lost his um, job there on the uh, wharves and came to Sydney to pick up work. He explained about um, what he um, had, um, some of the workers he had been with who had worked in Hong Kong ports under the Hutchinson operations, where some of them sh their shifts went for 12 hours. They were set up sent up into that crane high above the ground with their um, food for their meal and a bucket to go to the toilet, 12 hours operating there. These are ruthless conditions um, and now a ruthless way of dismissing, dismissing the workers. Um, so the other comment that came up a lot on, as there was speculation of what the tactics were with Hutchinson was that uh, this um, feeling that it was a push for automation, automation without negotiation, and um, as part of that is just relying on a minimal workforce that is not employed directly by Hutchinson but by some body hire company. Now, just to body hire is an issue that periodically comes up. It's um, being used more frequently um, and is certainly another way um, that makes it very hard for working people in this country to gain a decent wage. The essential difference between a, um, um, an employee who works for someone else um, um, and if they're in a body hire company, that if they're in a body hire company or what's officially often called an independent co contractor, is that then they're deemed as operating their own business, where if there is an employee, they're working for someone else. And there's um, in, in enormous significance in that. An employee are entitled to the benefits of the laws established for their protection. And while those laws may have been weakened, there's still many of them here in Australia, um, and they're obviously very important for employees. If you're no longer an employee, you're um, put out there as a so-called independent contractor by some body hire company, the whole situation changes. Um, and it's very important, this issue, because the integrity of our employment laws need to be protected. And they can be run down overnight, and this is what Hutchinson appears to be up, up to if it uh, removes um, workers, its own employees, and then uses a body hire company. And the, those, those same workers could become independent contractors, you, losing so many benefits overnight. Because just because someone is called a contractor should not dictate that they be treated for legal purposes as such. And I wanted to give emphasis to that point because I think in the um, times ahead this will become more, more and more important. Just because somebody comes from a body hire company, they've been designated as a so-called independent contractor, doesn't mean that they are not an employee. By engaging a contractor, a firm could be spared the cost of holiday and superannuation entitlements ensuring against work-related um, injuries, exposure to un unfair dismissal claims or severance pay. Now, you, you can see why th um, some companies move to um, use this form of operating. And also, um, uh, contractors, that form of operating in the workplace, uh, makes it much harder for unions. Uh, so again, these companies can get a free ride to um, greater profits. Um, and again, I, I, when I, in my opening remarks, I made reference to the bull system, um, which was a very ugly way the wolves used to operate, um, where the um, person um, to get a job you lined up with often hundreds of um, fellow workers, um, and um, a foreman would stand looking down on the men and um, pick out the ones who were, looked, big, looked, looked like big blokes, because in those days there's no containers, you had to lug it on your back, and it was tough, hard, dirty work. Um, and it became known as the bull system. Um, and it was something um, the wharfies and their unions fought very hard for, for, to bring dignity to the workplace, to bring in rosters, to bring in what are called gangs, groups of workers, to work together, where the work was shared out in a fair and a just way. And eventually that was one. There, there was safety and um, 
workplace um, regulations and laws brought to the workplace. But again, we're facing that being run down. Now, um, body hire um, is something that pops up in many industries. Now, I did want to emphasise, because I do find often when you talk on these issues that people are very people um, who favour how the companies operate are keen to misrepresent what one says. So I did want to say that I'm not ruling out that there's no place for body hire. Regulation of the use of body hire um, does have um, a role. Sometimes, clearly, employers may, ne may have a genuine short-term need to um, top up their workforce. Um, there is often peak production problems, unforeseen absences, um, where the, the, um, workers need to be brought in at short notice. So there, there is a need um, in some in instances for this to occur. Um, so I wanted to put that on the record. But we know there's so many examples in so many industries, particularly the building industry, increasingly now these days um, in the maritime industry, um, for, for this type of labour to be used to make um, workers' job, jobs even more insecure. When this um, debate came into um, Parliament yesterday, uh, Senator Doug Cameron asked um, Mr. Um, Senator Abetz, the responsible minister, about it. And um, Senator Abetz gave one of his usual replies. He um, really um, didn't have anything useful to say, but you certainly got the message that he was in no way going to um, stick up for workers who had lost their jobs and effectively, again, justifies um, sacking workers by a text message. But also in his comments, he um, went on to make some very insulting remarks, which he um, trots out periodically. Um, and, this, and his comments were, this is uh, reading from Hansard, um, the MUA, and this is a bit from Hansard, has a disgraceful history of even sabotaging our World War II effort and compromising the safety and security of Australian soldiers overseas. Well, firstly, the MUA wasn't around in the Second World War, but those mistakes are made. But who he's referring to there is particularly war wharfies, um, and this is, this is absolutely shocking, where Senator Abetz has sunk to such a low level. Um, he was largely drawing on a book of Hal Kolbatch's, um, which actually um, also disgracefully and just shows the narrative this government is desperate to push out there about, um, and the, um, this book won the Prime Minister's Prize for Australian History. Now, Colbert, Colbatch, and I will have to come back to this because it really does need to be corrected on the record. The book is called Australia's Secret War, and he gets it wrong time and time again um, um, in terms of the allegations that he made about how the so-called sabotage. He um, bases his um, work on really just secondary sources and the only primary sources are the memories of some very elderly Second World War um, veterans who um, were describing events that occurred 60 years ago. So with regard to um, one incident which he describes about um, um, radar being um, 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 interfered with, he gets the, um, the type of aircraft involved, the air force to which they belong, um, and even the incident that actually happened wrong. That's been well documented, and I look forward to coming back and setting up the case because what you see when the Wharfies were um, working during the Second World War was that they contributed enormously to the Australian war effort. And that was particularly shown by the Wharfies at Port Kembla, who refused to lo load pig iron to go to Japan that could have been used in um, bombs that could have come back to Australia. So they actually took industrial action, very fine industrial action, to protect Australians. But as well as doing that, they contributed themselves directly to the war effort. So um, this needs to be put on the record because Senator Abetz, um, and I'm not going to go into his own history, but it is certainly so tempting um, when he is so insulting, so wrong, by trying to further slur warfies at a time when they are facing some real challenges, as indeed the whole country is, with automation being stepped up. So I look forward to coming back to this important issue once again. Thank you, Mr. President.